All right, you're good. Recording. And we're going to go broadcast. All right. People joining right now. We have one attendee, and that's it. <laughs> Hi, Steven. Hi, Miguel. Hi. All right, they're coming Miguel. in. Let me say hey. Okay, so we have 20 now. Awesome. All right. I'll let them all come in first. Yes. A little warmly Hi, welcome. Andres. Hi, Diana. Awesome. 41. Hey, guys. Can you guys hear us? Hey, if you can hear us, please just, I don't know, just write on the chat. Write on the chat something. Okay, chat. Sweet. Hello. And then a question to all of the, the attendees. Can you write in the chat saying where you're from, what location? I just want to get an overview on like where everyone's at. Yeah, India. Yeah, okay. USA, very fast. Havana, um, Spain, Netherlands. Norway. Okay, now I cannot read it anymore. <laughs> Boston, so. whoop, whoop. <sighs> all right. Oh, San Diego, all right. No one from Venezuela? What's happening here? All right, uh -huh. Peru. Hi, Miguel. Oh, okay. So, uh, guys, if you have friends who want to join this, tell him to to join right now because when we hit the 100 attendees it's closed for everyone so just rush and tell your your friends and yeah, family let them, let them in let them in tell, yeah tell your mother right now mom you have to <laughs> tell be. your whole friends and family <laughs> and hurry up yes Pass the waste in. <laughs> all right <laughs> okay dallas all right so i think we have 74 people here already we can start talking all right let's do it all right, so we're gonna start. And then the first thing I wanna to say to is thanks to everybody for showing up. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you, Kristen, for being here. And then thanks to all of you data enthusiasts, aspirants or data scientists, whatever. We really appreciate you being on board with us on our first episode. And just to give you an overview of what we're gonna be doing, it's gonna be a mix of a series of webinars, Q and A discussions, or and any sort of like podcast type of content. That's what we're aiming for. So we really need your feedback in regards to like what you want. And we'll, we'll try to bring that to you guys. But other than that, we're going to give a quick introduction on who we are. And then we'll let you know how this whole structure is going to be formatted. So um, in the meantime, while we give our introduction, I want all of you guys to go to the Q&A box and leave your questions there. That's where we're going to be answering all of your questions. So to begin, Fabio, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, I'm Fabio from Venezuela, and I'm here to change the world with data science. This is what I do. <laughs> and that's my introduction. I like it. Sweet. All right, Kristen, you're up. Hey, so I am Kristen Kerrer. So happy to be a part of Data Science Live been doing data science for the last 10 years and I'm happy to answer all your questions all right and then for me hey everybody my name is Randy and the best way to reach me Fabio Kristen is on LinkedIn yes That's, so um, I just want to say we're all here to help the data community is super great and you're in the right area to get to just learn and get all your questions answered so that's why we created this to just help as much people as possible. And so if we want to begin, we can start answering the questions and again. Yes, so uh, we're testing a functionality here on Zoom that you can upload a question. Please tell us if you can do that. Uh, if you go to the Q&A, you will be seeing like two questions right now. Uh, uh, one, I ask, uh, we have to answer this live. Uh, this will, uh, there will be a recording after this. Uh, you will get it on, on our website. It's datasciencelive.com. So maybe tonight or tomorrow, you're going to see that there. And okay, so uh, again, we're trying a new thing here where you can upvote for questions. Uh, please tell us if you can see that uh, in the chat. Can you see the upvote uh, button or something like that in the, in the Q&A section? Someone, please. Yeah, let us know in chat if you can. I see a see thumbs it. up. Yes. Okay. Where, sweet. So knowing yes, I have no idea. Okay. Sweet. <sighs> okay. Yes, a thumbs up. Oh. Okay. But all right. 
Okay, so we, you guys can see that. Yes. Oh, okay, good. Uh, but we cannot see the, the, the boats. Yeah, we don't, I don't see the thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, because the, the thing we can, uh, we, we was uh, like thinking is like, uh, okay, so we have to answer most questions we can in a way to do that is that you can upvote for questions and the, the questions with more upvotes we answer. Do we get to bring the people on to ask their question themselves? Oh, that would be so cool. I was really excited about that. Yeah, we, we, I think <laughs> we will do that. So I, I, I'm not seeing anything, so let's just start with the first question. That's it. No. It's from An Anushri Ankola. And please, Anushri, uh, I, I think you have to raise your hand in the Zoom, and we will uh, get you live. Uh, is Anushri. Anushri, are you here? Anushri, please answer. Come on board. Come on board. So we, uh, you have five seconds or we go to the next one. Uh, one, two, three, five. All right. So, the, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So this one is by Jeffrey Stoffers. Jeffrey, can you please raise your hand? Oh, what okay. happened to do I need strong statistics and mathematics background for data science? Okay, so Jeffrey's here. Oh, oh hey, Jeffrey. Hello. Hey, Jeffrey. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you for, uh, for hosting this. I'm really enjoying it. Awesome. Thank you. I'm oh, sorry, I don't have a video. So. Oh, okay, it's okay. So please answer, please uh, tell us your question. Well, I was curious, uh, since it takes a lot of time to, uh, to become a, di a data scientist, um, there will be a time that you are not really a data scientist yet, but want to, to improve yourself. And I was wondering what kind of jobs I should be looking for now that I'm starting to get interested in it, but I'm not quite there yet to actually be a data scientist. So what's your, um, your background? I have a financial background. Okay. Um, and I hardly have done any coding before. I started with an SQL course. Uh, and I can now do some basic back statements, uh, but I haven't done anything more other than um, using functions in Excel or maybe uh, prog uh, programming a little bit on a graphical uh, calculator on high school. So you don't use SQL in your current job? No, I don't have a data set where I can use it. Uh, the IT people provide me with a data set in Excel and from there I start doing my, uh, my research. Yeah, so if it was me personally, since you have a background in finance um, and you've learned some SQL, I'd put SQL on my resume and, you know, really mention your strengths on your resume about your ability to manipulate and understand financial data. And I'd start applying to analyst positions that aren't going to require as much coding you know, and learn at night more of the machine learning coding pieces. And there's like a whole world there. But, you know, with a finance background, I assume that you've got like the number sense to, you know, start applying to analyst positions. Yeah, I, I think that's a good way to start, uh, Jeffrey. So uh, most people, it starts with like a data analyst kind of job and then they move to data science. And uh, it's, an, it's an easier transition because you will not be asked to create models and do machine learning and any of that. You will be asked to uh, create some interesting charts or maybe just uh, create some uh, like good queries to, to see the data, group the data and, and, and stuff. And, and you will be doing that as a data scientist too. So it's a good idea to have the experience on that before going into data science. And, and there's not bad payments for that. You can have a good job as a data analyst and I, I, I think it's a good transition there. Okay. Yeah, and then for, for my say, I would say if you haven't started any projects yet and you, if you haven't done any of your um, job searches, I would say apply to as many as you can right now, whether that's an analyst, data scientist role, because each and every one of those applications is going to take some time to get feedback, whether that's a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And in that case, you don't want to waste your time. So I like to, I like to be efficient. So my saying is start applying now and then while you're waiting for the feedback you're learning so you don't waste any time and in this case the best way is like what you said before if you don't you don't have a good foundation in programming i would say start with python learn it as a language first 
doing leak code problems or code academy that's really great and at, like what Kristen said before SQL is a very very um, a mandatory skill in this field so my best suggestion would be to practice on code academy go to Kaggle and also data camp okay Jeffrey are, are you happy with with our answers I'm definitely happy thank you very much All right. oh thanks Jeffrey thank you thanks, okay. Jeffrey. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna remove you now I, I, I think I <laughs> Goodbye. It says, it, says, it says remove. I'm sorry, Jeffrey. <laughs> uh, I'm going to dissolve this. Okay. All right. All right. So Jeffrey's gone. Uh, so next question. I think because we, we I, I cannot see the upvotes thing. We kind have to go but in order. It's not the way. All right. So uh, we have now Jefferson Sankara. Jefferson Sincara, if you're there, okay, he's here. A lot to talk. Here you are, Jefferson. Hey, Jefferson, uh, how are you doing? Hey. Jefferson, can you hear us? Jeff? Oh. Uh, you. If you're muted, you can check on your um, the left-hand corner, bottom left-hand corner, and click on mute. Okay, so you don't have audio. Okay, oh, so yeah. I, I, I think he doesn't have audio. It's okay. He, he asked, how can someone passionate about DT? What's DT here? Maybe it's data science. Oh, data science. All right. Okay. <laughs> data technology. Is data technology is a new thing. <laughs> All right. Grow without a full-time job and, and use that experience to apply for jobs. Right, maybe I can start here. I think it's a very interesting question. And there's a lot of way to start without having a job. And, you, and, and there's platforms for, for doing that. You have Kaggle, but, where you can apply and do a lot of different projects. You can sign up for like, like the real competition or just try some, uh, some, some data sets there. And, uh, and then you can uh, put your kernels and people can, can see them. They can uh, interact with you. Uh, they can uh, give you some suggestions if you don't think you did a, a, an amazing job or something like that. There's, there's GitHub too, where you can put your, your open source code there. Uh, you can put your own, your own studies. Like, okay, I downloaded this data set from Kaggle and this is all my code. I use Python and I, this is what I did. So this will be like real, uh, real experience from your side without being in a job. And I think Randy can tell you more about Kaggle because he said Kaggle master. <laughs> I want to double down on what Fabio said with Kaggle. So for those that don't have a lot of projects, don't have a lot of experience, I emphasize Kaggle so much because it's, it's, it's one of the most practical ways for you to see how you can work with data. And the reason being is, um, so Kaggle, they provide you with a lot of data sets, which is great. So my, my big point to you is pick a data set that you're really interested in, pick a problem that you really like, and start going to Kaggle for three main reasons. One is Kaggle allows you to look at other people's kernels. And these people can be experts. These people can be people working in a field and they create notebooks and they put all of their analysis, their codes. And that's like the gold mine of actually understanding how they think, understanding how they created their analysis, how they applied their machine learning models, that's literally what they're doing. That's what you should be doing as well. The second thing is sharing. When you're doing these projects, especially if you're new, you have to share your work, whether that's on LinkedIn, whether that's on GitHub, on Facebook, because you need that feedback. You have no idea if you're doing it right or if you're doing it wrong. And that's where the Kaggle community is, is there to help. The third thing is practice. Um, it just gives you a lot of practice there's Kaggle Learn, there's competitions, and then there's kernels. So yeah, and then if Kristen, you have any advice for that? Um, to grow, yeah, no, I fully agree with what Randy said. And also, you know, some of the MOOCs have fantastic capstones at the end, which would give you a project again that, you know, and, and a lot of it is going to be positioning, um, like positioning yourself to, to get a job. So work on these things and make sure you package it up 
to make it sound like it's something that a business is going to really want to hire for because that's your end goal, you know? Yes. Okay, Jefferson, thank you very much for your questions. And oh, one thing here, if you, ans if you ask your questions as anonymous, we have no idea who you are and sorry, please uh, post them with your name so we know who you are and, and we can uh, promote you to talk with us. Okay, so Jefferson, bye-bye, thank you. And now we have Manjun Ma Manjuna Swami. Manjuna, if you're here, please raise your hand. Manjuna, okay, I'm, I'm seeing it. Okay, okay, here you are. All right, you can talk now. You're on mute though. Yeah, you're on mute. <laughs> can you see us? Yeah. Hi, Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. And uh, actually I'm basically a mechanical engineer. Okay, so hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah I hear you. we're listening to your question. We hear yeah, you. Yeah, we're good. Okay, yeah. I'm basically a mechanical engineer. I have worked in uh, automobile sector and I have worked in uh, chemical processing uh, plants too and recycling plants. So this has been a very big uh, drastic shift uh, towards uh, changing towards data science. And I've already been trained in uh, analytics, but I still don't get uh, the uh, importance of linear algebra in data science. Okay, um, so in your mechanical engineering degree, did you take things like discrete structures and calculus and? Yeah, calculus yeah. was a part of my curriculum. Yeah, so I mean, I could see how, so a lot of the fields of mathematics overlap, right? And I personally, you know, having a master's degree in statistics, wish that I had taken numerical analysis because that was very applied in being able to write code to solve these mathematical problems. Um, personally, my linear algebra training was, uh, you know, a lot of like cute proofs and it was pretty theoretical and, um, you know, I could see how it could be a lot of that material could have been covered in other branches of mathematics. And I don't think that you should like stress out about linear algebra. That's maybe unpopular opinion, but that's my experience. Yeah. And then for me, I'm just going to give you a, like a high level overview of why it's important. So in the case of machine learning and data science, the reason being why to emphasize linear algebra and calculus so much is because if you think about it, when you're looking at a data set, it's, it's in a form of a, a, ma a matrix and each row can be seen as a vector. So in this case, like you can imagine your vector space as a feature space. Mm -hmm. So when you, whenever you're applying these transformations or these, these certain algorithms to your, your data set, you're, you're doing some sort of linear algebra to it. And then where calculus comes into play, um, this is what machine learning algorithms are. They're different algorithms and the whole part and the whole core of calculus being used is to optimize a solution. Optimizing and trying to find like a minimum value for your cost function. And this is a term where like gradient descent comes into play. So that's just a high level overview. I'm pretty sure Fabio ha can go deep, deep more into that. But so I have that's another that's comment on that as well though, because like in a, a, so like in a graduate level regression course, you're going to see the, you know, covariance matrices, the matrices, all those like theoretical calculations with, you know, all vectors and matrices and you're, and you're finding the maximum likelihood estimator. And so like, I just feel like you can, like the concepts are important, but you can absolutely learn them someplace else without necessarily having to take a linear algebra course. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I'm, I'm gonna say something even weirder. And is that, <laughs> and is that if you, uh, I mean, you can learn the linear algebra you need to know by watching some uh, and, and reading blog posts and Kaggle kernels. I mean, you don't need to be an expert in what's everything. In it. I mean, it's, it's a very big topic, uh, the, the algebra part. But we, you're not going to be uh, like, if you're not a researcher, you're not going to be seeing these equations. Maybe 
maybe uh, no even one time. I mean, you're gonna be the working with libraries that they have all these equations for you done. And what you really need to understand here is, I mean, if the question is to understand data science, yes, you need to go to the equations and you need to go to, to, to the books and the, the articles and papers. But if the goal is to be a data scientist, you may not be an expert in this. You only need to have a high level uh, experience and you may not even call it algebra. I mean, I, I, I don't think I've ever called algebra when I'm doing like machine learning and stuff. I just say, I'm doing machine learning. You're not saying, yeah, I'm optimizing this way in the same right now with linear algebra. I, this is not a thing in the, in, the, in, the, in the data science world. This is very important if you need to know them and, and you should if you want to be a good data scientist, but for starts, you only need to have a very high level uh, knowledge on, on, on algebra. Okay. You know my, how what you're doing is affecting your data. <laughs> yeah. My, it, how do you say your name, Manhu, Manjuna? Uh, it's uh, Manjunath Swami. Okay, Manjuna. Okay, thank you, so, Manjuna. Thank you. Yeah, sir. thank you. All right. So we have a lot of questions. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to maybe uh, just go through them quickly. So now we have Felix Agbabor. Felix or Felix, if you're there, please raise your hand. Felix, Felix, are, are you here? Okay, Felix, we, you have five seconds, I'm sorry to be so, so hardcore, but there's a lot of people interested here. So Felix, one, two, three, five. Okay. All right. Sorry, Felix. All right. So now we have Deepa Chetri. Deepa, can you hear us? If you can hear us, please, Deepa. Okay. We, I'm seeing her already. Oh. Hey, Deepa. How are you doing? Hi. I'm good. How are you guys? Hey, great. Hi. Hi. Uh, so uh, I'm pursuing my master's in software engineering. And I'm pretty new to data science, like I'm just one semester old. So I do have concepts of data science, but I still don't know how to build a profile in order to approach, like, like pitch for myself. Like I've done, I've done this project, like just to portray myself uh, when I'm applying for some job or something like that. So I was just wondering how can one build a very strong profile, which cannot be neglected. Anybody want to start? I think I think this is a, this is a, a good question for for Kristen. Oh uh, yeah, Kristen, yeah. you can start this. Um, yeah. So there is a lot that you can do, and those projects that you've been doing, even if you don't have real world experience, are valuable, and you will want to place them on your resume as though they're work experience, um, and make sure that they're very readable, and try and speak to. You know, you can say um, analyzed certain type of data, leveraging R, um, and then, you know, list A or, or, or Python or whatever, um, uh, you know, mention the methodology that you used and, you know, mention like a key result or how this could be leveraged to show value, you know, and then at the top of your resume where you're gonna put your skills and technical abilities, make sure that you list out, you know, that you have experience with um, regression, classification, any of the different types of algorithms that you have experience with, make sure you put that at the forefront. But, you know, I think that there absolutely is an, an opportunity for people who do not have a ton of or any work experience to position those projects in a way that is going to catch somebody's eye. Oh, I can go. And then, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Fabio. All right. Yeah, this is a good question. And for what Kristen said exactly what I wanted to say. And another thing I wanted to include on that as well is if you're, especially if you're a student and again, you lack a lot of experience, the only, only practical way for you to showcase your, your asset as a data scientist is through projects. And when you're trying to sell yourself through your resume, remember the main goal. Your resume is only there for you to get into the foot doors of an interview. That's it. Mm -hmm. And you, if you can follow Kristen's email, I think she has a great template for you to, to use. 
I would follow that. So the structuring of your, of your um, resume is really crucial because again, these interviewers are only going to spend maybe five, seven, 10 seconds looking through your resume. And within that few seconds, you have to showcase all your technical skills, holding any critical skills or critical um, highlights that you want it, that you want them to know about you. And all of that can be seen through, I just have to say it again, Kristen's little format. So if you, if you could check her out on that or email her, that's, that's my say. Yeah, so I guess I, I will mention, so I have a blog, it's datamovesme.com. Um, the three most recent articles that I've posted are how to make sure that your resume gets past ATS, um, because a lot of people have recently moved towards like tableauizing or putting pretty graphs on their resume. And unfortunately, in most cases, that doesn't get parsed. Um, how to position yourself for a career change to data science and how to write crisp concise content for your resume. So those blog articles are all available on my website. And then, you know, if you were looking to go even deeper into that, I did create a whole course around how to um, create a really effective resume for marketing yourself for data science positions. Um, okay. Okay, Deepa. So thank you very much for, for being here with us. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right. So, so, oh, wait. Uh, okay. So uh, there's a lot of people with their, with their hand raised. Uh, I don't know what to do with that because we have, we have 63 questions right now here. I, I don't think we'll have time. Do you have any type of uh, strategy right now? Um, okay. I just like oh. the question auto ML is coming. Yes, it is. It's here. <laughs> it's here. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good question. Uh, all right. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's go to the next one. Uh, uh, this is something I'm not aware, of, but I think Kristen and Randy could answer, uh, could answer this. So Sushan, Sushan, Sushan Bang Mondal, Su, Su, Sushan Bang Mondal, if you're here, please raise your hand. Sushan Bang, uh, not seeing, not seeing you. Uh, okay, I, I see you now. Here. And you're on mute. Hi, Shushan Van. How are you doing? Shushan Van, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, so um, please tell us your question. So my question is that uh, I want to do an internship in Uber. So how can I land up on a job in Uber? Since I have done ample of uh, certifications and projects uh, in, data, in the field of data science and machine learning. So I just want suggestions that uh, how could I get into Uber as a data science intern? Hello. All right. Uh, so how to get to how to get an internship at Uber? Yeah. Wanna, all right. So are they hiring interns? Yeah. Actually, uh, know some people that work from Google here in Mexico, and I've been in contact. A uh, very um, interesting group of people doing great stuff, and I, I don't have a, a like a specific answer for you on how to get an internship there. I think what I can mention is to just go to their page on LinkedIn and try writing some of the recruiters. Uh, I, I, I I think that's the only way you can you can see if they're hiding, or you can go to their web page, and most likely they will have uh, positions open there. If you see like an internship position there, just apply for it. Or maybe just contact uh, some people uh, through LinkedIn uh, that work for Google, uh, Google for Uber as, uh, as recruiters and just ask them, hey, I'm looking for an internship. Can you please help me to do that? Because that, that's all I know. I've also, I've also messaged, you know, people who I've been able to identify as probably the decision maker. So if somebody is the director of data science or the director of analytics, and they have an open internship position don't start like messaging people without looking on the website first but if they are looking to actively hire i'd create a nice pitch um that shows the value that you can deliver and you know tell them that you have the skills that that they're hoping to acquire for the internship 
Yeah, and then for me, I would say, from, from my feedback with the students that I mentor with, I get, they get a lot of results when they do those direct messaging on LinkedIn. Um, but other than that, you can either do that, but make sure you, you, like what Kristen said, you create a pitch for yourself first. Don't just ask to ask. Make sure you're providing value first. It's always a win-win uh, situation. It's not, can you give me this and I give you nothing. So, yeah, um, I have to come up with a blog post for like how to write a kick-ass data yeah, science that'd be pitch. Great. <laughs> that, that works a lot. Yeah, great. That works a lot. Um, but the second thing I would say is, Another way for you to stand out when you're applying for these internships is, again, you're working with Uber. Uber's getting thousands to hundreds of thousands of applicants. You're going to have to stand out. And the best way to stand out is by doing projects that are super associated to their problems. And you can find a lot of those data sets, anything with cars or I'm assuming like optimizing how to find the, the quickest path to a certain location, stuff like that. And you can get more information about that through Glassdoor. So go to, go to Glassdoor, look up Uber, and look up the past interviews that people have had. And then try to find some commonality and just double down on that. Incorporate, incorporate that into your projects. Incorporate that into your skill sets in, in your resume. And that's going to give you a higher chance in landing that internship. OK, thanks a lot for your suggestions. All right, Sushamban. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thanks a lot for your suggestions. Okay, have a good day. All right, so we have a, a, a quite interesting question here by Amol Bide. Amol, if you're here, please raise your hand. Okay, I'll see you now. Hey, you're on mute. Hey, Amol. Hey, how are you doing? Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for the webinar. Um, so uh, I am in this uh, industry for uh, 15 plus years. Uh, I'm not from computer science background, but uh, I have done some programming and uh, architecting solutions, enterprise solutions. Uh, the question I had was, uh, I mean, it, there are two questions actually. Uh, what is the variety of jobs that are available in data science field? And secondly, uh, how to distinguish between like a data analyst or a business analyst uh, position versus a data scientist? position because sometimes the uh, job postings could be misleading. Absolutely. That's true. <laughs> yep. Does somebody want to go first? I don't want so, to steal yeah, all of them. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to go first. So uh, first regarding your, 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 your last question is like, how can you distinguish? Right now, it's not that easy because for some companies, the definition of the analyst is closer to data science. And for some other companies, it's very different. And right now, if you go to Facebook and, and you see uh, their, their like job descriptions, they have something called data science analysts and something like that. And, that, and, they, and, and, they, and that's for distinguishing because they have like a core team for data science, like they're researching and stuff. And they have the people uh, seeing the data and, and working for like high level models and stuff. So... Normally, if you see something called like data science analysts, yeah, that means that you will not be like doing research for the company and stuff. You, you will be being a data scientist, uh, like a normal position data scientist. And uh, the only way, I mean, if you're gonna be applying for data science, the job description should mention something about creating models, uh, machine learning and stuff. If, if you see a description in a title that says data analyst, and in, in the description you see machine learning, something's weird. So maybe you don't want to work there. <laughs> so maybe they don't have like the, the whole picture of what's data analyst or, 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 or what's data science. And I, I mean, the distinctions are not that, uh, it's not that a, a complete different field, but there are some steps you need to go through to become a data scientist, like uh, uh, being able to create models, being able to do machine learning, being able uh, to go beyond uh, your queries and like uh, uh, crunch data and do the analysis in an effective way for your modeling uh, uh, like uh, understandings and stuff. So uh, if you, I mean, this is my, my, my last suggestion here is that if you really uh, are interested in one position, uh, write to the, to the people who put the, uh, the, the position on LinkedIn. And normally you can see who posted the, the job uh, description there. You can just send them an, an email 
or you can send them like a, a LinkedIn message asking, hey, is this position for data science or, or, or data analyst? And I, I, I really hope they can give you a better answer here. Yeah, and so I think, you know, unfortunately in industry, a lot of job postings are just made by people copying and pasting, not spending a lot of time thinking, and they, and they slap a title on it. And there's also a, a big problem with people putting the title data science on positions that aren't actually data science positions, where they really want you to just, you know, write SQL and create dashboards, but they're calling it a data science position so that people will apply. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, sometimes you don't know what you're going to get until you've applied and you get a phone screen. And in that phone screen, you have the opportunity to ask about what's actually involved in the position and and what your like responsibilities are going to be and you can start to evaluate whether or not um, that's going to be a good fit for you but literally until you get someone on the phone to speak specifically about a position um, you know the job job descriptions just sometimes like are not a true measure of what the job role actually is yeah Fabio and Kristen just covered majority of that and I just want to add something minor is again so the field of data science is very it's fair, very new and again it's still evolving and in this case there's a big intersection between like data analysts and data science that again it, it's it's very misleading because it's it's it could be the same thing in some certain um, situations um, but back to that, I would say a great way to actually maybe compare one with the other is like with, by looking at the terms. So I'm assuming for a data analyst, you won't be seeing terms of the use case of machine learning at all or any sort of statistical modeling. So that would be the biggest differentiation. But other than that, whatever Fabio and Kristen said, that's definitely the way it is. All right, I'm all. Yep, thanks. Uh, and I had first part of my question. Um, what all variety of jobs are present in data science field? Like for a fresher and then for someone who's experienced in the industry, are there variety of job positions that you're aware of? Yeah, I, I, I mean, if you, again, I'm going to uh, tell you to do the same. Go to these big companies like Google, Facebook and stuff, and you'll see different positions for data science. You see data science for marketing, data science for uh, for like one specific part of the company. And, and they have a, a very well-defined position for that. And you have uh, like managing positions and, and there's people who are just gonna be there like consulting data science. And there's a lot of, uh, this is a lot of different stuff you can do with data science. Supporting supply chain, supporting operations, mm -hmm. so, you know, things that are businesses that I'm not even completely familiar with. And then there's, you know, data engineers and of course, you know, business analysts, analysts, data scientists, data researchers. Yes. Um, there's like a whole, and, and at the end of the day, you really just need to read the job description and, and make a judgment call on whether or not you want to apply to it. And the air on the side of applying to it because a lot of times it's not actually going to end up being what was even written on the job description. Yeah, then like for each <laughs> position that you're reading, whether that's like data science, business intelligence, research scientists, data engineers, machine learning engineer, each one of these positions, it's, it's very subjective and it's really hard to tell. So um, I would just say really pay attention to um, the phone screen, like what Kristen said, that's the only real way for you to actually get the sense of like what you're going to be doing on a job. Other than that, it's, it's just back to a numbers game and hopefully you land something like really nice. Thanks guys. Okay. Thanks Amal. Thanks Amal. Bye. All right. We have now Miguel Angel, Miguel Angel Cotrina. Miguel Angel, if you're there, please raise your hand. Miguel Angel, are you there? Uh, uh, we're we're test we're testing your patience here. If if, if you're strong enough to stay there, we will answer your questions. <laughs> All right, Miguel Angel, I'm not seeing you. 
Miguel Angel, Miguel Angel is not here. All right. So we're going to go to the next one. This is by Dante Sanchez. Dante, are you here? Dante, if you're here, please Colin raise your hand. Dante, are you here? Oh, here it is. Here hey, right. Dante. Hey, Dante, how are you doing? Dante. Hello there, guys. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hey, what's up? So, uh, regarding my question, it's, uh, I've been uh, here developing myself on the video game industry, and I'm a product manager. And I'm really like, uh, in the past two years, I've been like, super excited about data. But I don't have any programming background. I'm, a, I'm more than a business background. I have my, uh, my MBA and some startups. But now it's like I want to like, like digitalize and make data regarding all the new startups here in Mexico. So what's your advice on, on how can I grow on the data field without having any programming background? So Do I really need to learn or to start learning programming? To clarify, awesome. you have no programming, but are you interested in learning programming or do you not want to learn how to code? Um, if, if that's necessary to me to keep growing, I'm totally willing to learn. But I'm Coding's actually, fun. Like, <laughs> I'm always looking for growth, so it's, uh, it's yeah, I, that's I what think, it takes. I think we can all agree that if you want to be a data scientist, you need to, to be able to program. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the most checks uh, boxes for becoming a data scientist because people will expect you to do that. I mean, if you go to a company, I mean, and this is right now in this year, I don't know what will happen in five years with AutoML or 10 years with robots in all, in, in, but right now, you need to be able to know how to program and not in every language. You need to, to, to know R, Python, or one of, 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 of one of those. I mean, those are the main languages you're gonna be seeing a lot in the job descriptions and you need to be able to understand those. Uh, if you have a business experience, that's awesome. I think you have a lot of uh, things covered right now because data science is also, about business too. You need to understand how, how a business work. And you, you have your MBA right now. So I think you, you are in a good path. And if you uh, learn how to program those, uh, you just choose Python or choose R, I will prefer Python too. Uh, and just start from there. Uh, and, and, and one of the cool things, and I, someone asked me this before, that if you learn Python or R, you will be in the data science community already because when you search for Python projects, like 95% right now of them are with data science. And if you search for our projects, they're all data science. So without you even knowing, you will be practicing for data science a lot because almost everything in, in Python and R is, is built for, for data science. So I, I, I think it's just a win-win a from, your, from your side. All right. So you have any recommendation where to start, like any book, course, webinar? Even oh, if you yeah, have so I can answer that. Um, but to answer your first question, just to get a, like the big picture, the reason why programming is really important and relevant for data science is because the data is gonna live in your computer and the, the only way for you to actually manipulate it and do whatever type of functions or calls or transformations to your data is through the use of uh, programming. And Python and R is highly recommended. And then back to your question, I would highly emphasize DataCamp. It's really well structured. It's great for learning, for learning purposes, just to get your foot in the doors. And then um, learn Python as a language first. So don't jump yep. into yeah, don't, don't jump into those, those um, libraries like Pandas, Matplotlib, without learning the foundations. So by foundations, I'm saying learning the fundamentals of programming, understanding data structures, algorithms, loops, for loops, conditionals. Um, and this can be learned. I have a, a really great site that I recommend is Code Academy. And it just gives you a hands-on approach in learning the fundamentals. So I'll send you a link on the chat. Okay. Awesome, guys. Thank you very much. Oh, oh Dante, one thing. Uh, and... Sure. I'm, I'm actually creating uh, a, a course for data science for business with Python right now. And, okay. and, and part of that will be Python a, a Python crash course. 
So in the next few months, I'll be announcing. In the meantime, as Randy said, there's a lot of great uh, places to start. Uh, you have Code Academy, you have Data Camp, you have, you have courses on Coursera, EDX and stuff. They're, they're free courses, they're paid courses. Uh, I'm, I'm just telling you that I'm, I'm gonna be having something for that in the next few months, all right? But like right. if you've been spending your time uh, looking at data in Excel and you move over to Python where you can merge data sets and drop duplicates and like <laughs> encode features in two seconds, like, uh -huh. like it's gonna blow your mind. Like you'll be so happy you made the move. So good luck to you. It's gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> fun. All right, thank you. See you, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, thank you, everyone. Okay, so we're gonna move along here. Uh, we have the next question, uh, but uh, there's sadly a lot of anonymous questions. I'm sorry, I have no idea how to uh, to know who you are here. Oh, there's a lot of anonymous ones. Yeah, I don't know if that's a problem with, with Medium or you didn't want your name to be there. But we're trying to do something like more interactive with you guys. So please uh, just type your name, your name there so we can promote you and you can talk with us. And it, I think it, it will be faster that way. So uh, the next question is by Willie Lama or Jama. So Willie, are you here? Raise your hand, Willie. The, the world's waiting for you. Come on, Willie. Willie, are you here? Willie Lama, Willie, okay, so I think Willie's not gonna be here. All right, sorry, Willie. Uh, we're gonna go to the next one, anonymous, 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 anonymous. Uh, that's a lot of anonymous questions here. Uh, okay, so Gaurav Kumar, Gaurav Kumar uh, is here, all right. Hello, Gaurav. Hey. Yeah, hello. Hey, Gaurav. How are you? How well, are thank you? you for the webinar. Thank you for welcome. joining us. Yeah, thank you. Happy. So I have a couple of questions. So I'll just fire up my questions. So um, what is the scope of data science over, uh, for the down the line 10 years and uh, with the auto ML is coming and uh, can data science can be optimized? Can uh, cleaning data will can be op optimized? This is my first question. And uh, second question is like, uh, what kind of a skills that tech giant company uh, looks when they hire data scientists apart from technical skills? So, yeah. you know, for me personally, I've been doing this for like 10 years and it's only gotten easier. And so, I mean, I hear other people having a not so rosy view of what they think it'll be in 10 years and nobody knows, right? But from my perspective, I just think it's going to be get easier and easier to do really cool things. Um, and there's also a lot of companies that don't have the data infrastructure in place. So this um, emphasis on how important it is to leverage data science for making decisions, I think that, you know, companies are going to start getting the infrastructure in place, um, moving to the cloud, like, you know, we, we talk about all these things and there are some companies that are eons away, but the majority of companies are still, you know, trying to get the infrastructure so that they can start to leverage models. Um, and so I think in the next 10 years, we're just going to be in a place where we are leveraging these things um, more across the board. And, you know, as it has been over the last couple years, tools and libraries that, can, that come out are going to continue to make our jobs a little bit easier each day. Yeah. And then I would like to add to Kristen. So like what she said before with, so in 10 years is the big scope. We have no idea what's going to happen. No idea. But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but again, um, I think the, a, the, a big thing in within 10 years is since a lot of these companies aren't using a lot of the, these machine learning tools. And I think the next 10 years, it's these companies, they're, they're going to play catch up, meaning they're going to be spending a lot of their time, again, like making the infrastructure, making all of their plans, creating their databases, all of that. So it's still a great opportunity and it's just going to go up from here. But a skill that's indispensable and that's always needed that can be automated is your sense of problem solving, your creativity. And that's what 
companies are hiring you um, for you to do in the first place? Yeah, I mean, we're, we don't have an idea in the, in the, in the amount of, if we have no idea in 10 years, we will be naming data science, data science. I mean, that- You could rebrand you know, again. Yeah, I can rebrand <laughs> again. So, uh, but but I, I think the automation of stuff will be happening a lot more and, and that's only good for you. I mean, don't, don't think that as a threat, not yet. Just think of that as, as something that will help you to be better in, in your job. So that's, that's I think my, my answer for that. Yeah, the cool new stuff isn't going to be automated because, you know, it's cool and new. And then eventually that stuff will get automated and you find something else cool and new and you build it out and then eventually that gets automated. Um, but just back to, you know, other than technical capabilities, what are companies looking for? It made me think a lot about the question from our last webinar where somebody said, what would make a company say wow to a candidate? And it's like, Honestly, you know, first of all, go in there prepared so that you don't say anything silly in your interview answers, but most importantly, like be personable, be, when you come in, be somebody that I'm going to want to work with. Like if I want to, if, if you come in and like, we have a great talk and you can answer questions about models and you can answer a coding question and you can whiteboard SQL. And at the same time, like we really hit it off. Like, like that's, that's it. But you know, those things that I just mentioned get rid of a large, a large number of candidates. Okay. Go Thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so let's go. Uh, we, we have like 10 minutes, so let's go to the next one. Uh, I, I mean, I think we need to do more of those because this is a very, this is a very interesting format. Yeah, these are I mean, some good I, questions yeah, too. Yeah, in the chat, can you just like give a thumbs up if you found this useful and would come to another one that was structured just like this where it's questions? Yes, please do that. So we know that this is what you want. Okay, in, in the meantime, I need Rahul Kana. Rahul. I need Rahul Kana. Okay, we have you here right now. All right. Hi, Rahul. Hello. How are you? Hey, Rahul, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Thank you for the webinar. Anytime, yeah, so my question pleasure. was, I uh, So my question was, I recently you know, graduated in in, uh, computer science degree and I really got interested just last year in the data science but I now I got a job which you know they told me to just be in big data because the company is uh, moving to Hadoop system so they told me that I have to learn you know Hadoop and everything and stuff so my question was actually how can I integrate this big data and data analysis or you know some what is like one point meeting point how can we integrate that yeah so great question Hello. depends on the um structure of your data right so i could go into a dupe right now at work and i'd have a key that would allow me to if i pulled the data from the big data environment down onto my local machine i would be able to join those data sets um so, you know, it's just finding a key that allows you to do that. And, you know, don't be so intimidated by big data because it's once you, once you get in there and you start getting, feeling your way around and get comfortable, like it's not that scary and it's, and it's very fun. So one, one more suggestion for my side, if you really want to have a connection between data science and big data, I think Spark is the way to go because it's, it's so simple to use and you can just have your code working with, with your small data and then you can scale that with the same code. So I, I think it's, it's a good platform uh, because you, have, you can do machine learning, you can do deep learning now with, with Spark. You can do like data crunching, data wrangling, everything you can do with any other framework. So my suggestion would be if you really want to join this, those two areas, uh, something like Spark can be a, a, a good start for you. Yeah, and I would just like to add too, so it kind of goes hand in hand and big data is just a term for large scale data. So the, the process of doing your analysis, it's all the same. 
it's just the, the extra tools needed to aggregate these type of data. That's again, the term big data is just different. You're just learning new tools, but the whole process of an analyzing your data, solving your problems, applying these methods, they're all intuitively the same. Yes. Oh, fine. Just one more question. I have, have uh, you know, access to Audacity's nano degree and data camp. What would be my, you know, if I would start again, I, I actually followed data camp for a while, but if I would start again, how would you recommend the course like data camp first or Udacity first? Man, I mean, I, I haven't done any of the courses by, 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 by not, not data camp or Udacity, but I know people that are coming from both sides and they love both platforms. I, I think it depends on what you want to see. I, I, I think in my knowledge, like data camp is like more practical stuff. And if you want to have like hands on and get dirty with the data and stuff, I think maybe data camp is better for you. And I think Udacity is more like in the theoretical part, you have a questions and problems and exams too. But I, I think if, you're, if your need is to get uh, uh, more familiar with, with language and stuff, I think you better go with data camp. And then, yeah, so for, for me, I would say um, they're both different in their own way. And again, um, I just wanna let you know, you can't rely on one platform to learn everything. Yeah. So you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to find other sources besides data camp and Udacity because data science is such a big field and the best way for you to actually learn is by applying it through your own projects, coming up with your own problems that you wanna solve and seeing how everything fits together. So data camp and Udacity, they're great platforms to get like a big picture on like what to actually learn and how it can be used. And then you're gonna have, to, once you take those courses, you're gonna have to take it to the next level and start applying it to some sort of data or problem you want to solve. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Bye, Dante. No, this is Raul. I know, but I'm <laughs> saying goodbye to Dante, who's in the chat and said he had uh, to and, and you know, and you know what? <laughs> thank you, thank you, Randy. I just came across your Cloud ML, you know, website. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Back. It's really great, actually. Thank you so much, Raul. Message me on LinkedIn. I'll be so, I'll be more than happy to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hey, Raul, thank you very much. Thank you. And except my LinkedIn, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Uh, I, for some reason, I've been reading in the chat section that uh, some of us need an email to connect. I don't have that. Uh, the, if, if you had that problem with, 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 uh, with adding me, please let me know because I don't have an email set up to connect in, on LinkedIn. So that's weird. Um, okay, so I think we have time for one more question. I don't know what to do here. Uh, this is my plan. I'm gonna scroll to all of this and the, the question that lands in my, <laughs> in my screen is the one we're gonna answer because why not? All right, so I'm gonna go and all right. So our question is from Ernst, MBA data scientist. Okay, uh, Aaron's. Uh, okay, uh, you're here. Okay. Aaron's, we can hear you. Yes, uh, which are my questions? How are you reading? Hi. Oh, hey, you Ernest, have several how questions. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I, 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 I don't oh, yeah, know. he's all up the oh, chat. He cheated <laughs> because when I did this, you cheated because you were more likely to, to get uh, the, the question. So that's a good. <laughs> That, that's good. So I'm, I'm seeing one here that says, what do data scientists find unexpectedly hard? And it's a very yeah. long question. <laughs> okay, maybe another question about, uh, you have experience with models used for stock market analysis, stock market prediction. I don't know, I have seen applications from machine learning. I don't know if there is something from deep learning being used in that field. Um, yes. Yes, so I will suggest that go, go to deep learning right now for that. There's much better ways to do that without deep learning. If you want to do deep learning for some reason, you can use LSTM and RNNs because they're good for predicting uh, like time series uh, data. 
And I, 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 I have an article about uh, how, uh, like a very short description of LSTM and RNNs and on how to use them with, with time series data, if you want to see more, more about that. But I, I know people that are working in the algorithm trading stuff, and they always tell me deep learning is not ready yet for like uh, doing real stuff with, with stock market and stuff. And so just go to the basics, uh, read about how to do forecasting with machine learning and stuff. Uh, well, the, the it's difficult models. because it's stochastic data, right? Yeah, it's so very hard. And, and bit, how do you so, spell that, RMS? I heard, uh, what, sorry? The last part that you say uh, to try RMS. Okay, so RMN are recursive, ne uh, so, sorry, networks. recurrent neural RN. networks, and, and LSTM is long, short term, yeah. term memory. So I those are, are, are used for, for stock market prediction. If you go to Towards Data Science, there are great articles on that, and they're free. Where, sorry? If you go to Towards Data Science, it's a web page. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, see, I know that. I didn't hear. Yeah. You'll see articles uh, what there. What about business intelligence, applications to business intelligence? I am teaching BI at college, so I was wondering um, what is the best part of uh, data science that I can incorporate in a BI course? Data science is, is a new BI. I know. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, that's the, the, the cruel reality. I mean, I, I think a lot of the stuff that data science is like given like, oh yeah, we, we do this. Is I mean has been uh, a part of BI for decades. So uh, if you know BI, to go from BI to data science is just programming. It's like programming and knowing the libraries and stuff, and maybe uh, understanding the frameworks and and being able to to do these new things that we do. But BI is very similar to data science and. Uh, I, 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 people in BI are already programming and the only difference is the machine learning. I mean, because there's just no standardization across mm -hmm. titles and stuff. Yeah. Um, what about deep learning? There is deep application? Learning, deep learning is, right. I mean, deep learning is cool. I mean, I love it. I write a lot about deep learning, but in, in, the, in the end, you don't use that much deep learning in your companies. I mean, you will be using a lot more a decision tree than a deep, deep uh, network. So make sure to really understand and like take the most of basic machine learning or of whatever you want to call it, because you will be using much more uh, of that than deep learning. I mean, uh, there, there are some cases you want to use to learning like computer vision, NLP and stuff. But if you have a model to predict uh, when someone's gonna buy something, maybe you don't want to use uh, deep learning for everything. Just, just take a look. Uh, the basic models first, and then you can just try to go to, to, to deep learning. Yeah, if the relationship is non-linear, go to deep learning. If the relationship <laughs> is linear... <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> I like it. Awesome. And, and also, you, you should be thinking about if you really want to do deep learning in a big scale, you need a lot of, 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 of hardcore hardware. You need GPUs and stuff because, I mean, we can use deep learning on our computers, but if you really want to scale deep learning, you need to have a lot of computing power. What would you recommend on, on platforms, frameworks, uh, NIME, I don't know, uh, start with. Yes, oh, okay. Uh, oh, Spark, uh, Hadoop. So my, 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 my always answer would be Spark. Uh, but I, I, I think, <laughs> I think. get you an affiliate link or something. I know. You better yeah. open source. A little logo. <laughs> yeah. But I can, if you really want to have a taste of deep learning without like being uh, coding and stuff, you can check Deep Cognition. They have a, a platform for doing deep learning in a drag and drop form. And I, I have several blog posts about that. Uh, you, you even have like H2O, and you have out to ML with deep learning there too. So it, 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 and it's also free. So check it out, deepcognition.ai. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So it's 404. We, I mean, we can just continue here, but I think people have something to do. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, uh, thank you very much to, for being here with us. We even have Spanish questions here. 
that's so man. great. That's nice. Yes. Uh, so uh, Thanks, we're everybody. sorry if we didn't answer your question. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, more structured stuff in the near future, but we, we, we will be having more of this. So maybe each three ses sessions will be a, a Q&A because there's a lot of interest in, in, in you guys for Q&A. Uh, there will be a recording for this in, in our website. And please follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter and just connect with us so we can chat and have more uh, great conversations. Yeah. And then before we leave, I just want to say, since this is our first um, webinar, we really need your feedback. Feedback about what we did, what can be improved on, what you want. We need that. And the best way for, for us to know is by either sending us an email, sending us a message on LinkedIn, or just contacting us. You so, know what? I will send out a poll because, you know, we're going to send out the recording of this video. I will add a poll in the email that will capture feedback. And so if you guys could do great. us a huge favor and give us feedback, that would be amazing. That would be great. Okay. Awesome. So, okay, guys. So we will be seeing you very soon. We will announce the next webinar uh, this week or maybe next week. And, and more coming from our side. So thank you very much to, for, uh, for being with us here. Thank you so Thanks much, everybody. guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a good one.